Ready? Let's go. Hello, it's another week and we are making another bao recipe today. This one is the Shanghainese pan fried soup bao. If you've never had pan fried soup dumplings, the way I describe it is imagine the crispiness of a gyoza and the fluffy juiciness of a normal bao and combine those two together and you get best of both worlds. I know you're going to love it, so let's get started. First, we gotta make the bao skin and let it rest and rise for about an hour. Now, this is a step that usually gives me the most trouble before learning from my mom. Usually what happens is my skin turns out to be kind of bumpy. It doesn't rise enough, you know, like that restaurant quality texture. Um, but I learned the secret and I can't wait to share it with you. In your flour. And then we are going to put in cornstarch. Now, cornstarch is her secret to achieving that fluffy, soft texture. It basically lowers the gluten level. Um, this is all-purpose flour, by the way. We are going to put in just a little bit of baking powder because sometimes, depending on the quality of the ease or the temperature, the humidity, you don't know how powerful it will be. Adding baking powder sort of gives it an extra push to make sure that it reaches its full potential. Next step is some sugar. The sugar is basically what feeds the yeast. Put the yeast separately in a bowl and adding a tablespoon of warm water, which I have over here. Touch it about a little bit warmer than um, room temp. I would say 50 degrees. All right. And what we're gonna do is just give it a stir and wait for it to bloom. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready. Half a cup of warm water. I'm gonna try to work fast because I don't want my water to cool down too quickly. Using warm water is also another thing to help this dough stay warm and rise faster and stay soft and supple. Good. I remember there's one of my favorite shops is on Young Street in Toronto. If you guys are from there, they're called Sanji Bao or something. And I was craving that the other day. And that's why I was like, oh my God, I gotta learn how to make it. And I've tried to make this before multiple times. I mean, it always tasted good because the filling is good, but my skin is just never as good as how they make it at a restaurant. And I could never figure out why. I've tried tons of different recipes and they never just work out the way I want them to. So finally, I asked my mom and she helped me figure out this recipe. And really what I love most about it is that the outside stays just fluffy, but somehow crispy at the bottom. The meat is of course flavorful and juicy and the way it fries up, it's so magical and I can't wait to show you the method. All right, so the yeast looks fully dissolved. It's a little bit mucky, bubbly and foamy. It's ready to use. And what we're gonna do first though, is we gotta combine all of our dry ingredients just to give it a gentle mix. And as usual, my mom's snowflake method. And we will add in about half of the water. This method of kneading is the most hassle-free way because your hands really doesn't get as dirty as you know it would if you start kneading right away. And really, this is a good way to knead freehand if you want to get better at working with dough you kind of learn to read the dough because I mean, a lot of the times, depending on the brand of flour you're using, even how old it is, the way it absorbs liquid is quite different. You push the dough to one side and you see how there's loose flour on the edge? You start slowly adding in a little bit more water at a time and you start incorporating it like this. And really, you just stop when <laughs> there is no more loose flour left. I'm gonna put the camera down so I can do this properly. Okay, so still some loose flour left. I will add in a little bit more water. Um, as usual, my mom's recipe is pretty precise, so you'll probably use up all the water. But again, depending on your flour, you never know. It's always better to adapt to the situation. And it's always better to have softer dough for this than a dough that is too hard. So it's okay if you add a little bit too much water, as long as it's sort of kneadable. So, okay, look, I have none of the flour left. So what I'm gonna do now is I will give it a very quick gentle knead. 
So this step of the recipe is pretty fast. You don't need to knead it into um, a smooth ball or anything. And we are going to cover it up and let it rise for about an hour or just until it doubles in size. Again, we're aiming for quite a wet, soft dough. So we're looking at something like this. Okay, so pretty soft. And I'm just gonna double check with my mom that this is good, that I don't need to add flour, and then we can proceed. Man! Not you. Oh, While we're waiting, we are going to make the filling. This is a 50-50 veggie meat filling. Personally, I like this better than 100% meat because it adds a little bit more texture from the crunchiness of the veggie, and it's just a little bit more refreshing and less fatty tasting. Also, the liquid from the veggie kind of makes it more juicy as well. The veggie we are using are green beans. I know a lot of kids don't like eating this, this is definitely a good recipe to use if you want your kids to eat more veggies. In this bowl, delicious. So I have some water boiling. I'm just going to wait for it to come to a rolling boil. Add in the green beans. We are going to time three minutes as soon as it comes to another rolling boil. I don't know how she got into this habit of watching me cook, but every time I film, she just sits in that chair and watches me. It's kind of sweet and kind of strange at the same time. And she knows I'm talking about her, so she's not even looking at the camera. Oh, yep. I'm going to quickly mix together the minced meat and the wet ingredients slash seasoning. You will need seven ingredients for the filling. First, we have minced meat. This is just minced pork. Ideally, you want the kind that's a little bit fatty. Soy sauce, cooking wine, sesame oil, salt, sugar, fish sauce. Just like our soup dumpling, we are going to give this a stir in one direction. If you watched my last soup dumpling video, you'll remember that our trick for getting the juicy inside um, without using the gelatinous pork broth is by introducing in the liquid a little bit at a time and turning it until it's fully absorbed in one direction. So we'll be doing that step again. Now, I know that this translates to pan fried soup dumpling, but in reality, it's quite different from actual soup dumplings, which is characterized by having like almost translucent, really thin um, skin and full of juice. This one in Chinese is called shen jian bao, which translates to raw pan fried bao. Um, raw meaning that you cook it while it's in its raw dough form. So even though it is juicy, it's not like a mouthful of soup. Okay, three minutes, let's go. We will drain this. And immediately we are going to run it with some cold water. This will just stop the cooking process. Cooking your veggies like this makes it really, really crunchy and helps it stay really green. So you want to chop these up pretty finely. Um, think about like maybe minced. I think it just helps the filling become more homogenous. Looks about this fine is good. We're going to mix in the veggie to the meat. So if you're thinking, oh, isn't it easier to, you know, season everything um, together? Well, actually you don't want to do that because the salt will draw out too much liquid from the veggie. Um, and it just won't be seasoned as nicely. Like it'll taste almost watery. I find, um, soup, I find pan fried soup dumplings to be something that's very um, like street foodish when you are in China. So I always have really fond memories connecting to dishes like this. It always feels like, you know, a special occasion or something. All right, we are good to go. So this has sufficiently doubled in size. Still quite sticky. We're going to flour the board and dump it on. 
So usually if the water was hot enough and I guess the temperature and everything is perfect, um, it would rise within like 45 minutes. But I guess today our house is a little bit colder. So it actually took us maybe two hours. So really the best indication is just to see that it has rise enough. All right, get some flour in your hands with some sticky. So one of my friend who asked me to make this told me that every time she tries to make this, the dough itself becomes kind of sunken in and it's never smooth and fluffy. And there are three secrets to achieving that smooth fluffiness. Secret number one is this step. You really want to knead out the air bubble because what happens is if you don't, it's going to puff up temporarily and immediately deflate. So if you squeeze it out and then let it rise again a second time, it will achieve that fluffy texture that you want. Okay, that's sufficient. Now we're going to roll it out into a log. Now this recipe makes exactly 12 soup dumplings. So try to cut them as precisely as you can so that your boughs are the same shape. Okay, now comes the next crucial step. You are going to individually knead them so that you're expelling more air. You're going to take one, squish it, and take the top, push it in, rotate, push it in, rotate, push it in. This is kind of just an easier way to knead a small piece of dough. And what you get is one smooth side, and that's secret number two to getting that smooth texture. I'll show you when I am done. So you pretty much do this for like 15 something times until it is a little bit stiffer. And you see the bottom is completely smooth. And you can also roll it out like this at the end. And then you get this little cute little thing. And if you look at it at the base, this is where all like the wrinkly stuff gathers and the top is completely smooth. When you're kneading, you're not rolling, okay? You're actually kind of keeping this grounded to the palm and you're just pulling it almost. The bottom constantly stays in contact. I'm not changing the bottom everywhere as I roll it. I'm keeping the base right here and then I'm kind of pulling it with, I guess the base of my other palm, kind of like this. This step isn't that important. You just kind of want to make sure that you get the wrinkles at the bottom. Okay, so this is good. I need my rolling pin. Okay, now same as the last bao recipe, we are going to roll out the dough, keeping the center unrolled. So if you want to brush up on the rolling technique, definitely check out that video. I'll link it up top. You can see here the middle, I haven't touched it. It is very, very thick, while the edges are a lot thinner. And once again, this is just to make sure that your filling doesn't leak through and you get that crispy bottom this way. The filling we have here is also measured for 12 portions. So what I'm going to do is just divide it like this into four. Each quadrant is going to be for three soup dumplings. First one. And I find using a spoon the easiest for this one, just so you can kind of pre-shape it into a ball. So I've explained the technique for wrapping boughs um, in very detailed instruction with like origami and everything in my other soup dumpling videos. So check that one out um, for a very detailed instruction. And that's one. Technique number three is to make sure your filling isn't too cold. Um, temperature shock usually most of the time isn't good um, for creating like the perfect texture in food. So just make sure that it's somewhat room temp before you wrap it in. Next, we're going to expel the air bubbles. I think with this step, the key is in the thumb. You're kind of pulling, 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 and I'm keeping the base touching my palm the whole time. And you don't want your hand to be too powdered at this point because you want there to be a bit of a grip. Okay, so now the top is smooth, the bottom is wrinkly. Press it down. Okay, this is a really close call. 
Not my prettiest one. Oh no. See, okay, if it doesn't work, worse come to worse, just pinch the top. This is really not my best wrapping day. I'm having an off day. I mean, this one isn't bad, but this one is really ugly. <laughs> Yeah, so I definitely did not cut them evenly. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, you see me doing, but today the bowl is very heavy. Why? Look. It's okay. But it's okay. If you get a bowl, it will come out. Ah, if you get a bowl, you just don't let it get wet. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes and you can see that the pleats have blurred away and that's how you know it's ready. And you really want to look at the last one that you made. I will admit, these really are not my best bows. Um, I did not cut it out as evenly as I thought I did. So what happened is, because I was still trying to put in the same amount of filling, some of the dough got stretched out more than the others. Don't worry if it happens to you too. It happened to me and I freaking was trained in culinary school. So I will show you that even with this ugly wrapping, it's still going to turn out delicious and fluffy. Let's go to the next step. So we are going to turn it on to about a medium high-ish. So for us, it's a six. So for this recipe, kind of like the steamed bao, you do not want to open the lid when it's cooking. So ideally, you want to get a glass lid. Um, I prefer to use a wok just because it heats a little bit more evenly, but a flat pan, um, a non-stick flat pan also works just fine. A little bit of oil, just enough to cover the base. We're gonna do the chopstick test. As you can see, it sizzles because there was some water molecules trapped in the wood. So it is ready to go. Right now, I'm at about a four. Slide these in. You don't want it to be too hot so it doesn't get burnt, but hot enough that it kind of sizzles. <laughs> so we are going to pan fry them at about a medium just until the bottom is crispy. So keep an eye on it. You're looking for like the tiny little bubble, nothing too aggressive. Okay, you're looking for this color, can you see? That is when you are ready for the next step. I have some lukewarm water. You're going to pour in enough water to cover the waist of the bow, so a little less than halfway. And cover with a lid. Okay, now we are going to wait for about five minutes. So if you have a glass lid, you basically wait until most of the water is gone and you see really big bubbles um, forming just around the bows. If you don't have a glass lid, it should be at least five minutes. Um, you can also listen to hear that the sizzling is gone. Do not try to open it as you're cooking and keep the temperature about a medium high as well. So four or five-ish. Okay, it's been five minutes. We're going to turn off the heat. Keep the lid on. It needs to sit for another three minutes. Okay, moment of truth. In restaurants, I see them served upside down. Maybe it's because they're all ugly too. Maybe it's not just mine, you know? <laughs> Okay, now for the finishing touches, you are going to sprinkle on some green onions as well as some black sesame seeds. Hmm, the smell is good. Sweet, sweet taste. Hmm, it's good. How we like to eat it is with a little bit of vinegar and some sriracha. <laughs> she approves. Much, much better. I think it's good because it's not too hot. 
，因为它本来煎的就很丑。It's so ugly. 哎，如果你要蒸的包子，你必须做的好看一点，是吧？生煎包不用担心，只要它发的好，它一定能发得起来。然后你背后煎酥了，味道都一样。